Hey guys, welcome back to Sudoku Maniac. First of all, I would just like to thank you all for the overwhelming response to this series of Sudoku solving techniques. I had not imagined in my wildest dreams that I would have such a good response from you all. So, thank you so much and I hope I can continue to live up to your expectation. So, continuing the series, I'll be presenting the Y wing today. Now, before we proceed, since you guys are enjoying this so much, I hope you guys have already subscribed to the channel and clicked on the bell icon so that you are notified as and when we upload new content for you. So if you have not done that, I strongly suggest that you do it right away. You would not want to miss out any one of these techniques that we are presenting to you this week. So coming back to this vibing. Now I know in the world of puzzles, there are so many names that are so obscure, you know. Because some people call the XY wing also as a Y wing. And in certain cases, the Y wing is a completely different technique, which is totally different from the XY wing. So we are going to present the second version of the Y wing because we have already covered the XY wing in the earlier videos. So what exactly is this Y wing? Y wing is basically very similar to the X wing and the chains technique that we saw. You can even say it's a combination of both. In the X wing, we remember that we had identified a digit which will occur only in two places in any exit, given two rows and two columns. So basically the positions of that digit would form a perfect X and a rectangle if you can call it. Whereas the chains technique, when we were identifying the chain, we saw that only one side of the digits were in the same row or column, whereas the other two endpoints were in uh, different rows and columns depending on the shape, thus giving a trapezoid figure. The Y wing is similar in design to the chains technique, I would say. The difference being, in chains technique, it was only one digit where we identified the four points it would come and the other two ends which were in different rows and columns, they had multiple options available. We were not looking at other digits that were occurring along with the digit in question. Whereas in a Y wing, a digit will be in two rows or columns in exactly two places each, thus forming a trapezoid figure. And in each of these endpoints, it would have only one associated uh, pencil mark along with it. So instead of trying to waste time, let's have a look at a diagrammatic explanation of that. All right. So now let's have a look at this. Now this is only for an explanation. The digit in question here is identified by the letter A. Now I see that in row 4 and row 7, the digit A can occur only in two places each. And one of these endpoints is the column 1 which is a shared column. And for row 4, the other position is the column 8 whereas for row 7, it is column 7. Now if you look at the additional pencil marks that are there in these cells, in column 1, it forms a pair with the digit B. So we have AB and AB which forms a pair, right? The other two endpoints which are in different columns again form a pair on AC. So it is that we have only one additional option apart from the letter A that can occur in this. So what here it means is in the chains, we were only eliminating the digit A from the body cells. But however, here we can eliminate the letter A as well as the letter C from all the body cells which are marked in grey and circled out. Now you may question how. So let's assume if this is an A, row 4 column 1 is an A, then 
row 4 column 8 would become a C and which would eliminate the letter C from all the 6 cells that are marked in grey, right? But if row 4 column 1 was a B, then the A would be pushed to row 7 column 1 and again the C would get pushed to row 7 column 7 and again it would eliminate the letter C from the grey cell. So the, basically the grey cells with the circles marked are buddy cells to both the cells which have the option A and C that is row 4 column 8, row 7, column 7. So we can blindly go ahead and remove both A and C from these grey cells and that is how the Y wing technique is used in class consider. Right? Why don't we have a look at a live classic Sudoku where this technique would be used. So this has obviously been created by me and I have given a link to the puzzle in the description of this video. So if you want to try out this Sudoku, please go ahead, click on the link. It's all free for you. Try it and see how well you can use this Y-Wing technique. All right. Having said that, shall we move on to the puzzle? All right, here we go. So, the first thing we do is start, oops, why am I marking it? Let's go with the numbers. So, this would be a one, the classic rules, seven, seven, one, one. So, this is a one, seven there. Three, three, three cannot be here. This is a three. This is a 3 and this would be a 3, right? 1, 6 cannot be in these two. So this is a pair of 1, 6, 1, 6, which gives me a 4, 9. 7, not here, not here. This is a 7, this becomes a 7. So this is a 5 to complete the column. And that gives me a... 4 and a 6, which makes this a 1, this is a 6, so 7 and a 1, so the 1 would be locked here, okay, now let's see what else, okay, 2, 2, the 2 is here, and it's here, 8, 8, this can't be an 8, this becomes an 8, the 6, is logged in these two. The 5 also is logged in these three and so is the 2. So this would be a triplet of 2, 5 and 6. I cannot have a 5 in this because this 5 cannot be here is logged up in these two. So the 5 is already logged in column 3 in box 1. It cannot be here which again gives me a 4, 9 pair and this becomes a 6, 9. Alright. This is again a 4, 6. 4, 6, 9. 4, 5. 4, 5, 6. This would be 1, 4, 5, and 9. 1, 4, 9. Alright. Now, in box 7, the 4 is logged in row 7 and 9. In box 8, also the 4 is logged in this. So the 4 has to be part of these two cells, right? Because this is a triplet of 2, 5, and 6. With this 4 here, this has to be a 7, a 4. This becomes a 7, so we can eliminate the 4s. And this again would become a 6, 9. Again, we get a pair of 6, 9. So we eliminate the 9 from here. And this becomes a pair of 1, 5. And this column I require 2 and a 5, so this would be a 5 and a 2. I require 1, 4 and 9, 4, 9, 1, 9, 1, 4, 9. This is a 5, 6, 4, 6, 8, 8. 8 can't be here, so this is an 8, so this becomes my 8. 
and this would be a 4 by 6, oh, sorry, not a 6, with a 4 by. All right, since this was a 2 pi, this is a pair of 4 9, this also would be a 2 5, this would be 1, 2, 3, not possible, 4 is possible, 5 is locked here, 6, 7, 8, and a 9, and this would be 1, 2, 3, 4 is there. 5 is again logged here, 6, 7, 8, and 9. This is a 6, 9. This would be a 5, 6 because of the 9, and this would be a 5, 6, 9. I'm just trying to fill up all the pencil marks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this would be a 6, 9. And this would be a 1, 9, and a 1, 9. The final number here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. Now, now that we have filled up all the pencil marks and nothing obvious is available, let's try to search for the Y wing. And I'll use some color coding to identify, identify the cell. So the first thing I notice is I have two places where I have a pair, 1, 5, 1, 5. So is there any other pair of 5 that I can find for this in a row? Yes. I'll use yellow. So let's see if this 1, 5 also has a counterpart 4, 5. Beautiful, isn't it? So now we have identified the endpoints of our Y-wing trapezoid. Correct? Now let's try to look for the buddy cells of these yellow. Uh, cells which are marked in yellow that is. Let's mark them with green. That would be this, this, and this, right? Because both these two cells can see these three cells marked in green. Which basically means if 5 was our A and 4 is the C, the A and C cannot repeat in these green cells. Let's look logically before we eliminate them. If this is a 5, right? If that is if row 6, column 8 was a 5, row 6 column 1 would become 4 and obviously the 4 would get eliminated from all of these. Right? But if this was a 1, this row 1 column 8 would be a 5 and row 1 column 3 would become a 4 and again the 4 would not be possible in the cells that are marked in green. So you see how true the Y wing falls into this Sudoku. So now that we have identified the sorry, the four cannot be in this. It can't be here. It can't be here. Now we got a six. So this becomes a four five. Nine is out from here. So that's a two. This is a five. That's a four. Now four and nine are out from here. So this becomes one four nine. So that's my one. That's a five. That's a 1, 6, 9, 6, 9, I already got a 5 here. So this is again 6, 9, 6, 9 pair. That becomes a 5. So 4, 5. This is a 6, 9, 4, 9, 4. And we have a 9. So this has to be a 6. This is a 9, 6, and a 9. So this is a 4, that's a 9, this becomes a 6 and this becomes a 4. We got a 2 here, so that's a 6, that's a 5 and finally we got a 2. I know when we visualize these techniques they sound so complex and not worthy of spending time on during a competitive environment. I agree to a certain extent because in a live competition, you're more worried about solving fast. Yeah, I mean, you get points to solve it quickly rather than solving it logically. Nobody's bothered how you got the answer as long as you get it correct. But you never know when the technique is going to come handy. I hope this video was quite informative. I mean, if you did enjoy it, 
do like it share it with the people and subscribe to the channel if you have already not done that if you have any feedback for us do let us know in the comments or if there's any specific technique that you want us to cover suggestions are more than welcome we look forward to hearing from you and i hope we continue to receive the same love and response that we have been getting from you since the past few days so till we come up with the next technique happy solving